Dave, we were talking about this, but I don't know if anybody else, you know, that that's watching has kind of caught the the sort of the news from the ARRL, but um, there the FCC is proposing a change to the. Uh, let's see if I can get this enlarged a little bit. A change to the uh, sixty meter band. So um, if you're, I don't know. Dave, you, you get you get on sixty meters a little bit, don't you? I, I think uh, you yeah, once in a while. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a little more difficult because the uh, you know you got to be right in the channel. And there's those five mm -hmm. channels are are non adjacent, so it's a different mentality when you're using sixty meters. But yeah. but I've used it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, if you're uh, into Poda and you're trying to get that. I forget the name of it, but it's like 10 different bands and 10 different parks activated or something. Yep. You know, you almost have to use a uh, 60, you know, to get, get 10 bands. So yeah. 60 is 60 is one of those that you need to, yeah. You that to, to get that, that 10 pack, the 10 bands, the 10 parks on 10 different bands. Uh, and it's channelized. There's five discrete channels. Um, it's we the amateurs have a secondary allocation on the 60 meter band and it was originally created what must be close to 20 years now because it was in the early 2000s but I, I think it was sort of created sort of as um um a band for interoperability between uh, you know a, uh, amateurs emergency communications and other um governmental and non-governmental agencies you know since they all sure. had access to these um frequencies you know, we could talk to say we could talk to a, a government or a non-government agency because it was all uh, we were we were secondary users on that. Another nice thing about the sixty meter band was its propagation was right. really nice for uh, the uh, the Caribbean, uh, um, the Gulf, and the, and the Caribbean islands. Because you know you could get in, you know, from some of the more far-flung islands into the National Hurricane Center. So it was always a popular. Um, you know, if forty meters wasn't working for hurricane net communication, sixty might be an option. So, yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, and, and Envis was effective there too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So, because it sat between the forty and the 80, 80 meter bands. So yeah, with yeah, that so little bit. Of, yeah, skip yeah. wasn't skip. The local skip wasn't as big of a problem as it was on forty. Yeah, yeah. So with that little bit of backstory, what the FCC pro proposes is um, to allocate fifteen kilohertz of contiguous bandwidth between fifty three fifty three fifty one point five and fifty three sixty six kilohertz on a secondary basis, with a maximum power of fifteen watts EIRP. <laughs> that's um, equivalent to 9.15 watts effective radiated power. <laughs> so it's, not, you know, it, it, that would we would have um, free reign of the frequency, but that would drop us down to QRP levels. So um, not really a, I don't know, that's not really a good thing because I think losing the five discrete channels is, uh, would really, you know, kind of put a damper on that, that sort of that interoperability communication. And, you know, we've, we've shown that, you know, we, you know, amateurs can operate, you know, with a hundred Watts uh, peak envelope power on the band. So it's, I'm not sure where this is coming from, why they want to make these, these kind of changes. So. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the activity, if you listen on 60 meters, <clears throat> most of it, unfortunately, <laughs> I say that because I'm not an FT8 fan. Uh, most of the activity is on FT8, and, mm -hmm. so, and and if that's the case, which it is, we could almost get by with just one channel because all the FT8 is on one channel anyway. But yeah. uh, and, and those guys, for those guys, the 10 watt or 9 watt limit is not a problem. No, because a lot no. of those a lot of those guys are running 10 watts right now. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. The ARL is, um, you know, they've they've um, petitioned the FCC. 
you know, it's um, so in his, as a response, you know, such implementation will allow for amateurs engaged in emergency and disaster relief communications, especially between the United States and the Caribbean, more reliably, more flexibly and more capably conduct those communications. So that's one of the advantage, you know, that's that's, you know, um, this is the ARRL speaking on keeping the four, you know, the four 60 meter channels that fall outside of the new band, as well as the as, um, as well as the current operating rules, including the 100 watt limit. So uh, what they want to do, what the league wants to do is to allow for the discrete channels, but also have that um, that that free that free ra um, range of of um, of band spread there, kind of like what um, uh, Canada's doing. Um, you know, the FCC rec recognizes that Canada's already adopted a 60 meter allocations and related rules that aligns with those proposed by the ARRL, and I. And, and um, the league says, you know, that Canada has essentially implemented the same rules that the ARL is requesting. So hopefully the FCC kind of gets on the stick. And if Canada is doing it, you know, being in region two, I think it makes perfect sense that, you know, we should kind of follow suit, suit on that. Mm -hmm. So. Um, there's a petition process right now, or, or excuse me, as a commenting process, they're due 16 days after the notice of potential rulemaking. And I don't think they've really, okay. They, they filed the notice on April 21st. So the comment period should be opening up. I I'm, I'm guessing now, um, except I don't see a link for the comments, but, um, so it would be good, you know, um, if, if you think that 60 meters is worth saving and that we should have, you know, we should keep those kind of allocations, I would encourage you to have a, you know, a, a well thought out and cogent uh, reply to the to the FCC on that one. So, you know, I wonder what percentage of uh, your subscribers actually have ever used 60 meters. It's a good question. So, because you know, my, my sense is that a lot of guys don't even know how to get to 60 meters with their radio. <laughs> you know, yeah. Because some radios, it's not, it's not obvious, you know. No, it's not. It, and the 891 is one of those. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the potential loss of power availability is probably the worst aspect. And I would totally agree with that. And um, to kind of follow that up, I think, you know, I think Rhea Gyrum is, is kind of, um, she's, uh, she's, she's kind of, um, you know, echo, echoed the same things on, on one of her, her live chats. And, um, I don't believe, yeah, I, I don't believe the comments, you know, you're correct. I don't, I don't think the comments have been opened yet. So we have to wait for that to happen. Um, so hopefully it happens. Well, it'll probably happen within the next week or so, I'm guessing if they've, um, already issued the notice so we just have to wait for that comment period to start up to, for that so but um yeah dave you're, you're you know when we talk about discrete channels if i can pull up a i pulled up i got a i got a band plan sitting here and mm -hmm. um see if i can get the 60 meters here we go and I think this is probably the word, you know, you know, the, the, the part about, um, you know, the 60 meter band is, is people, um, it's, it's, it's slightly confusing, um, uh, because we got these five channels yep. and, um, it's upper side band and you have to, you have to be on the center of the channel. So, um, there's, yeah. um. So it so while the channel is 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 fifty three thirty no that's us that's cw um fifty three um thirty five at the bottom you got to go up I think is it what is it one point four kilohertz to so you can be at the band center or something like that so yeah I'm trying to I'm trying to remember uh I can't read the graphic on my little uh, display here but is, <laughs> Isn't the uh, sideband for 60 meters uh, upper sideband? Yes, it is. Yes, it's upper sideband. 
which is a little bit goofy because it's between mm-hmm. 40 and 80. So then it's like, okay, I got to remember that. So yeah, yeah you, have to, you have to tune at the bottom edge of the channel so that uh, when you're using the upper side band, yeah, it's so goofy. Your, so your upper side band is at the ba- as, is at band center. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which makes, which now, makes it a I, little crazy. Yeah. Now I've only used the uh, uh, CW and FT8 on mm-hmm. 60 meters myself but um yeah it it's pretty effective though um and i'll guarantee you you'll never get get the jammed on 60 meters no <laughs> <laughs> no you won't you won't and and i think most of the 60 meter users are are usually you know it's 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 pretty accommodating you know people because it's those five channels people kind of give way you know so it's um um, everybody can sort of sort of, of share the frequency, but uh, yeah. Yep. And there's a lot of DX on FT8 on on 60 meters. Very mm-hmm. a lot of DX. So, all right. So look for yeah. Look, we'll we'll have to look for that comment section to come up, and hopefully, um, we'll see some resolution at that. That's going to be uh, positive for the for the 60 meter band. KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.